If more people were like me, exactly like me, the world would be awesome. I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to rob anybody, take anybody's shit. I'm not trying to fucking put shitty graffiti on the walls. Speaking of which, the fucking city's up. City came around cleaning this again. It's been a, a, a war between them and the Kangs since we, since Kangs moved in here during and after COVID. Um, they've been trying to graffiti the place up because it's what, you know, it's what they do. It's part of broken window theory. <clears throat> broken window theory I've talked about quite a few times, but uh, it's considered, uh, now it's considered like an absolutely alt-right idea, but it's it's not. <coughs> uh, <coughs> a long COVID. Um, what it says is that if there's a broken window in a building, it's more likely that bullshit's going to go on in that building. You know, nonsense, people doing stuff, maybe selling drugs in front of it or whatever, uh, because they see that there's a broken window so no one's taking care of the building um you see it in the inner city like a sort of version of that where the idea is to make everything as fucked up looking as they feel you know and it's a subconscious thing it's not like uh it's not something they're thinking of doing it's in the back of their mind you know uh, if they, they feel like if they make the area, and you see this with homeless people too, they feel like if they make the area fucked up, then no one's going to question why they're there, you know? Like, look, it's, it's a, this is all fucked up and run down, so you shouldn't care that I'm here. Um, it's, this, uh, it's this really weird kind of uh, self-conscious kind of thing. Uh, homeless people kind of do this too, whereas... If you let them stay in a place too long, like uh, we see it around my neighborhood, like one night one of them will sleep in the area and the people leave them alone. So they'll keep coming back there. And then eventually they start bringing trash with them, uh, like just piles of legit garbage. I mean, sometimes it's stuff they, they need, you know, or they have with them. They travel with a lot of stuff. It's unbelievable. But uh, sometimes they'll just start just making piles of garbage around them. And what the idea is, uh, psychologically, is it's like, hey, this, this place is shitty, so you shouldn't uh, be concerned with me being here. I'm supposed to be here, see? It's really fucked up. Uh, but that's what the graffiti is, a, is an offset, is, a, is a, an idea like that. So when... Um, when we started getting a, a lot of uh, people that do that kind of thing here during COVID and after COVID, at the expense of Pacific Islanders who, fuck, I mean, shit, I don't even see any anymore. You know, it's so rare to see, like, a Pacific Islander. Uh, I think I just saw one, but it's rare. It's rare. You don't see those guys anymore. Um, but when, since we started, since we brought in all the people that do this kind of shit, it's just been... It's been graffiti fucking central. But a lot of tourists come here, right? So it has to look nice. They can't have it look like shit like they want it to. Like the uh, the Kangs want it to. So they got to go around and clean it up. And that building I walked by there, it was like it's been a, a, a battleground between the, the neighborhood and the Kangs. The Kangs will come and they'll fucking tag it all with their useless bullshit. Misspelled words. Crowns to let you know who the king is. And uh, and then the, the town comes around and paints over it again. Which goes back and forth and back and forth. This wall over here has become a new kind of point of contention where they hit that one. Now. And, and again, we never had anything like this going on before. Well, we never had the people that do that kind of shit before here. You know, um, and I say that all the time. And not to say that there's not... There's not bad characters like uh, you know gangsters and, and rough guys that are Pacific Islanders there certainly are but they don't fuck up their own shit don't rob their own places they don't uh, try to 
make all their own stuff look like crap because it's their island and they are pride in it, you know, and they're Ohana. Um, but if you're from fucking Philly, you're gonna shit. You're gonna, you're gonna fuck the place up. You're gonna fucking put a gun in the old lady's face behind a counter and you're shocked, you know? What are you gonna do? See, I didn't want to talk about this shit, but <laughs> I found myself walking by the, uh, that building and it just brings it all up. As time goes on, it gets more like uh, my faith in people dwindles because no one will mention it. No one will talk about it. There's a uh, website called the Honolulu Civil Beat. It's like a liberal kind of uh, news aggregator, but you know, people talk on the uh, there's message boards and people talk about issues, uh, things that happen locally. I saw a, uh, an article about a teacher, uh, a local teacher, a uh, woman, Asian woman, who couldn't get uh, a place, an apartment, she couldn't find one. And it talked about her, you know, struggles trying to find an apartment in the area. And um, I didn't comment on it, I was going to, I will. But uh, what I was going to say is if she wants to find a place, what's that? No, I'd say Chinatown would be the closest thing okay. you'd be, if you, if that, like, take the two of the 13 bus. Do it during the day, though, not at night. The, um, okay for a no. So the, uh, I, what I would say to her, uh, looking for a place to, uh, to live, I would say <laughs> move to, to, uh, California or, uh, Chicago or Philly or Detroit. Um, and, uh, well, shit, but you gotta change your phenotype. I don't know how that's gonna work. Maybe you can disguise yourself. If you can get some CIA equivalent, uh, aesthetic changing technology to make yourself look maybe nine or ten shades darker, then, uh, you can work with the CIA who will put you in one of these places, uh, probably a nice place, that used to belong to a person that got squeezed out during COVID, and you can live there for free. Because that's what's happening, that's what has been happening, that's what I've been reporting on, and I know people know, but they're spineless. People are fucking spineless. You know, they won't, they won't say anything. Um, whatever, and as the, uh, the neighborhood degrades, uh, I mentioned the uh, the Japanese consulate gave a travel warning for here for Waikiki because of the violence. A uh, Japanese tourist was approached with a gun down by the beach, down where Nia works, robbed at, at gunpoint. That shit never happened here either because we didn't have the people that did that kind of shit. Now we do. Okay, it did, second safest city in America when I moved here in 2016. Now it's like the 9th or the 11th. And, um, yeah, the demographics have completely changed. It's very rare to see a Pacific Islander because they got squeezed out the most when they pulled their stunt of not distributing federal funds um, to people when they needed the most during COVID. Um, a lot of Pacific Islanders, people that have lived here for generations, whose family's been here for generations, they didn't have the big bucks to fall back on to, to make it through that period where uh, the federal government here or, or the local government here was holding on to federal money. They weren't giving it out. They were just giving excuses. You know, the uh, all the stories are archived. You can find them on the internet. At first it was, we don't have enough people to, uh, to pass this money out. There's too much money. We need to hire people. So that was their thing at first. So then they hired people, and they said, we have too many people, uh, to, we need a, a bigger place to put them in. So then they said they moved into the convention center, and once people knew that, they started showing up there saying, give me my fucking money, you assholes. So they put armed guards out there, and then come to find out they weren't even in there. So this, this fucking cat and mouse thing between the people and their money, I, I still haven't gotten all my money. It's all right, though. That's the idea was to to keep people from having money. So it would force people to, you know, 
vacate a lot of property in this area, and they did. And a lot of property opened up and all, at all different kinds of levels, like um, rentals, nice places, nice houses. They, they put some of these free living people in really nice fucking places, places way, way nicer than mine. Because the, uh, the state said to people who own properties here, landlords, they're like, hey, you know, we don't know when this fucking COVID thing's going to end, but we can pay you. We'll just rezone your uh, places for low-income housing. And you say, well, you can't rezone just anything willy-nilly for low-income housing. You can when you're in a state of emergency. And that's what COVID uh, granted them, a state of emergency. They could do anything they want. So as a consequence, um, they got in a bunch of people here that are living for free. They moved them in from the mainland, also from Africa. Some from South America, but mainly uh, mainland then Africa, Haiti, places like that. Moved them all in here. And that's where you see the 80% rise in homicide. The 46% rise in uh, aggravated assaults and rapes and murders. And I apologize to the people that have to hear this all the time. But uh, I don't want to talk about this all the time. But I walk out of my house and like I just see nonsense. I'm like, we wouldn't, wouldn't have to deal with this before. It was so awesome here before. I used to like get up at three in the morning, not be able to sleep. And just go for a walk. Walk out of the beach. Put my feet in the water. I'd never do that shit now. There's too many fucking too many people just hanging out. It used to be just guys by themselves kinda hanging out on the corners, just looking, just looking. And as time goes on, and more people come in, that's a couple guys hanging together looking. Now it's like three or four guys hanging together looking. And I'm noticing a lot of uh, those uh, immigrant style kind of dress, like they all got the feel of track suits on. It's the stuff you see in Africa, you know. And um, yeah, that's just uh, that's where we're at. And uh, yeah, I had a a guy that comes to the channel, a commenter, a uh, commenter, a viewer. Um, I don't know if it was Fred from up north in England, but uh, it was a Fred. It was one of the Freds. And he was like, yeah, I, I, you never had those people there before. Uh, before COVID, they, they weren't there. Look, I know. Now they are. I don't know people, though. You know, my neighbors will say stuff to me occasionally. But be like, what the fuck is with this guy so far? But like, how do you explain what happened to them? It was an operation. It was a complete, it was an operation. You know, um, it really started before COVID when all the drug dealers in Chinatown, where I just told that, um, where that Mahu to go, was, um, were all busted. Guys that had been selling there for decades, older, old heads, you know. And we we're like, wow, they, find, they must be trying to clean the area up. No. These guys were replaced at their spots, almost to the corner, with uh, guys from the mainland. Um, all of a particular type. And uh, business wasn't good. They were ripping people off and causing all kinds of problems. I said, why would they do that? And I thought, okay, that's a CIA move. They want more control over the drug trade. Everyone knows they work with the gangs, so they brought in some Cali guys who are maybe in the Bloods of the Crips or something, whatever, either either one, because I know they work with both of them, and uh, brought them here, and then they started seeing more people, more women and children, like, oh, well, they probably brought their families, too, and then from there, it was just like the floodgates open, you know, and everybody's like, wow, and I'm like, well, this can't be about drugs, because there's too many people, and then I started looking at the crime spike, the crime jump, and I started digging into researching that, and I did a little series on it, people started sending me information, like I found out they, when they come here, they get put on SSDI, because that way it can be abusicated from the records as a medical, uh, otherwise you would see this giant jump in welfare, you know, uh, you know, they have to kind of hide it a little bit, you know, um, so that, that, that took care of that. And it's, um, you can just see it in the street. You go in the street, 
and it's not like it's very easy to see because we simply didn't have a lot of people from that part of the world here or of that type of that style and the reason being is because as we're you know always told they're from the lowest economic rung of the ladder they don't have any money so how are they going to move to hawaii it's very expensive to move here alone and then live here it's fucking insane most expensive city in the country so there's some kind of money incentive involved and um and that's indeed what what happened and uh yeah i've been talking about reporting on it for years now i haven't seen anyone anywhere in a public space talk about it and I've, I've alluded to it you know sometimes on these message boards or local uh, community places where people talk occasionally i'll get someone that knows what i'm saying you know, they will come out and say it, but they'll, you know, well, in the case that they know what I'm talking about. But uh, people are just they're fucking spineless and wormy. And, uh, and they deserve what they get. All right, well, it was a happy, fun time with me. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it doesn't deter you from dropping it again. Uh, this is supposed to be good boy summer. I gotta try to. You know, not get in trouble with YouTube again because I'm very, very close to being gone. Um, we'll see. Let's see how that goes. If not, I'm always going to be, uh, I'll be on channel two. You got to keep going. You got to persevere and persevere. Persevere and persevere. Don't blame a teacher, blame a school. Look at all your cute little hats.